Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com. Today I am reviewing a watch that I do not sell. It is a now a personal watch and it's an awesome watch. Spoiler alert, it is the Christopher Ward Bell Canto um, with the light blue dial titanium bracelet. I'll go over everything. And ironically, on the other wrist, I'm wearing another watch that was picked up in a similar situation. My uh, new white Cassioke. I picked this up at the Chicago Wind Up Watch Fair in 2024. That was uh, July of 2024. And on this wrist, the Belcanto, I actually ordered this watch at Wind Up San Francisco 2023, April of 2023. So it was like a 15 month wait. Yeah, it was a while. Um, I'm pretty certain now that the wait time, and I was on their website before, I think the wait time right now, if you order it today, is sometime like the end of January. So they're getting better, uh, but whatever. I put a deposit down in April of 2023 and just, you know, bided my time. I really didn't care. Whatever came in, it came in. I knew I was gonna like it and love it. You know, and they communicated that there were delays, et cetera. I understand these things happen. They happen with Islanders. I can only imagine with all the tech and engineering going on here. Uh, but people that, I, that I've said I wanted a bel canto, I have one on order, that I bump into at shows, whatever, they'd be like, oh, you know, can't they get you one faster? You know, and I'm like, I went there, I said I want that watch, I pulled out my credit card and I paid for it. I, I don't curry favor, I didn't want fit. Did you hear it? It just went off, that's so funny. Um, you probably didn't, uh, maybe, I don't know, whatever, we'll see. Anyway, uh, that's not who I am. I just, I see the watch, I like it, I buy it, let's go over it. So here we go, we will do a proper unboxing. You'll notice it came from Christopher Ward in the United Kingdom. As of filming this, they still do ship everything from the UK. However, the watch shipped to me on, I don't know, let's say it was like a Monday. I had it on like Wednesday or Thursday. It was kind of crazy. Also, even though this watch is well over the duty allowance for the US, they do ship it duty paid. So no duties for me to handle, no DHL for me to deal with for a clearance or anything like that. Delivered to my doorstep direct to a ma'am, Frankel, whoever the heck that is. What is kind of funny about this is that my wife got the box and it was a few days before her birthday and she said to me, oh, you, this is for my birthday, ma'am, Frankel, that must, be, that must be me. And I said, actually, no, it's a watch that I ordered. Pretty cool, right? Not so painful bit. That's <laughs> the sales receipt. Really nice. I like how they put all this together. Anyway, but what was kind of, I guess, even funnier was that at the Wind Up Watch Show in Chicago, just a couple days before that, I had purchased her a the 12 36 millimeter purple dial titanium for her birthday, which was just coming up. So. Oddly enough, the next day or day after another Christopher Ward package was delivered and it was indeed hers. But anyway, so this is it. Nice sleeve around the box. Oops, take the sleeve off. You can see the box opening. So when you open it up, uh, the watch is not in it. It's on the side here, but you, there's a little folio here with the warranty card, all this stuff that I'm really not interested in. Um, but it's nice to know that they give it to you stickers and a cleaning cloth and a user's instruction manual, information about the model. My extra links are here. One thing that I did note that was very, very interesting, at least as far as I'm concerned, is that you see these two metal nibs here? They're magnets. And they interact with two magnets or two pieces of metal in the back of this. I thought it was interesting that a watch company chose to put magnets on a box, um, but I'm sure they've done their homework. Pretty cool though, as you get the Box almost closed, the magnets will take over and close it. But enough of that, let's get into this. So this is the Christopher Ward uh, C1 Bel Canto. It comes in a variety of colors, a light blue, a dark blue, a purple. I know they just did a collab with uh, Andrew Morgan, the talking hands, the old watch finder guy, it was in a red. You can get them on a bracelet or on a leather, on a kind of a Swedish matching leather strap. I opted for the titanium bracelet. It is actually grade five titanium, so it will take a beating. I'll throw the specs of the watch somewhere up here for you to read. This isn't a watch I sell, so really it's just more of an overview. Um, I guess everything I do is kind of an overview. But you can see the clasp itself, I've been wearing it for a few days, definitely doing some desk diving, and it's got some scratches. I expected to get a hell of a lot more scratches, but that 
honestly does not bother me. The watch is beautiful. What makes the Bel Canto different? What attracted me to it? Well, I've always wanted a minute repeater, and I still want a minute repeater. This is not a minute repeater. This is something else that I won't pronounce the name of. And at the top of every hour, there is a little chime that goes off, and it is it is uh, actuated by this little gong, excuse me, this striker that is the bird's tail hitting this elongated gong. Pretty cool. So every hour on the hour, we are treated to a little... I think it's uh, the note is D, and it is around 294 hertz, a little ding, and I will play it for you. I'll probably put it right up to my mic so you can hear it. I also did a time lapse uh, for a short, and I'll put that up at some point so you can see it going. So as I mentioned, uh, grade 5 titanium, so it is super light. Case back is solid. The whole case is designed such that there is a good resonance when uh, the sound is made so that it stays, it vibrates a little bit longer. A lot of science and tech goes into this, into making the sound. I'll get into that in a minute. The clasp is really nice. It is a titanium clasp, but it is a uh, toolless micro. You pull this little latch back and you can move this in and out. Uh, sizing it is easy peasy. It is with screws. A uh, couple of half links are in there as well. So nice of them to do that. What I was surprised to find when I opened the box originally, and I looked, there was no screwdriver for me to size it. So I had to go, obviously I have a billion screwdrivers. When we ship an Islander with a bracelet, it comes with a screwdriver. When we ship a bracelet, it comes with a screwdriver for you to size it at home. I was like, wow, this watch was fairly expensive. I'm surprised they, they did not include a screwdriver. And then I went back on that statement and said, well, that makes sense. A watch of this value, they probably don't want you sizing it. You should bring it to a professional because you'll wind up scratching the links. No worries. Anyway. So this is the light blue version, and I've always wanted, and I still do, a Breguet Tradition watch. And if you're not familiar with the Tradition, it's got the time at the top and a little open architecture, balance, and gears at the bottom. This is done in the same vein, and I really, really like it. Uh, the time is at the top. There is loom. We'll get to that later. At the bottom, the whole chiming is reenacted as a bird. Here is the bird's beak. The beak can either point to a little sine wave or it can point to off. And when you turn it on, you can see the striker is moving up and down. This is off and the striker will never hit. And that is on. How loud is it? I, not very. If you're having a conversation with a few people, you probably won't hear it. Movie theater, you'll hear it unless the movie is loud. Uh, driving in a car, yeah, you'll hear it go. In the office, you'll hear it. It's pretty cool, and it's a little reminder. You know, as Cheap Audio Man just said in the, the video that he did, every hour is a new chance for you to do something new, kind of like a new day, new hour. I really dig it. The base of the watch is a Solita SW200. You wind it with the crown, you pull it out, one click, there's no date, and you change the time. As I said, I did do a time lapse, but I will show it to you here. As you move the time forwards, watch the bird's tail and watch this little set of gears and cams here. As you get to the top of the hour, it strikes the gong and makes a sound. I will put it right by my mic. And you are greeted with that 295 hertz or 294 hertz, but who is counting? Uh, let's get into a little bit of the genius behind it. So the watch itself is based on a jumping hour movement that Christopher Ward had already made. Christopher Ward, in case you don't know, UK company, uh, I still believe they're celebrating 20 years now, UK company making their watches in Switzerland. So designed in the UK, uh, manufactured in Switzerland. They took an old jumping hour movement that they had. Jumping hour is a movement where the hour window, the hour is shown in a window, uh, much like a date, and every hour at the top of the hour, the date window, the, the hour window flips to the next hour, much like the date window flips at midnight to the next date. They took that movement and reconnoitered it, reconfigured it uh, to chime a gong at the top of every hour. Really nice, they did a wonderful job. Let's talk about the gong for a minute because I think it's very interesting. If you're into the science kind of thing, it's much like a cantilevered beam. It's held at the left here by that screw, and this is all, as far as I can tell, 
the entire length of it around back the other way is unsupported and just before the striker just above it on the gong you can see that the uh, the metal is filed away a little bit um, I don't know if that's for tuning or if for tuning they change the length of it by moving the end of the gong by filing it away I don't know it gotta be a very laborious process I'm sure to tune it into that 294 Hertz so how do they figure that out or what goes into that well this just basically means that the resonant natural frequency of the gong is 294 hertz. So you strike it against something, give it an impulse. It will excite all the resonant frequencies, all the higher order frequencies, N1s, N2s, N3s. Anything above one will quickly, quickly damp out. You won't even hear it. And the primary resonant frequency is the one that is going to survive. It depends on the material they choose for the gong. It depends on the cross-section of the gong. It depends on the length of the gong. Uh, and actually a, a bit depends on the edge condition of the gong. So pretty much consider this cantilever. It's fixed in six degrees of freedom for the most part. Uh, but really, really just a ton of tech, not just in the sounding, but in the case itself to make sure the sound is always nice and pure. It's not just cool looking, it actually works. I mean, it's, it's a watch. It tells the time, it glows. They have double indicators at 12 so you can get your uh, registration correct. They have really, really thought of absolutely everything. And I, Oh, well, simply love it. Does it stifle my need for a Breguet tradition? Probably not. I'll probably still grab one one day. But does it take care of wanting a minute repeater? It actually might. Um, but man, it is super comfy, super cozy. It's lightweight. Um, it fits my wrist wonderfully, six and a half, six and three quarter. Such a beautiful watch, there's so much going for it. You know, there's little things that I picked up on it as I started staring at it like any engineer would. Uh, there's just design elements. Like for example, if you look at the time itself, running left to right, there's those, kind of like a fork that's going in between everything. And then if you look, that fork continues. Whoops, I'm getting my glove on. That fork continues outside the clock here and here. So these are, from what I can tell, these things to the left and to the right of the time are superfluous. They don't do anything. Um, they're just there for design to keep the dial balanced. And they actually bounce against the bird, um, you know, from a, a symmetry, from a symmetry or a balance standpoint. And it looks amazing. Uh, simply love it. Uh, highly recommend it. Really cool watch. Uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. This is Mark from VolgaWatch.com showing you my Belcanto C1. Please like uh, the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. Questions, comments, anything else? Put it down below. I'll be sure to address it as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.